Right, so I am in the gym right now. Um, I have 315 pounds on the bench press. I am have a target RPE of about an eight right here. Um, see how this moves. Basically, what I use my singles for, my top singles, is just a fatigue indicator. Um, I hit 300. It was like a six. Like there was no slowdown at all. Um, so I'm going to hit 315. Hopefully, it's about like an eight. Um, typically, so how I know if it's an eight is because there will be some noticeable slowdown at sticking point, not just slight, it will be noticeable. And sticking point is about mid-range, so if it has to stick there, it should be about an, an eight. Um, if it's like, it starts to grind, then that's a nine. If it's like, I almost died, but got it up, that's a 10. But yeah, that's what I'm doing right now. This is my primary bench day. Um, so, yeah, I'm going to bench. Right, guys so you guys can see right here my primary bench day everything that I did um and kind of just watch the, the cards while I did this um today I had primary bench and then tertiary squat and for a tertiary squat I just did a isolateral hammer strength leg press barefoot um and the reason why is just because I'm farther out from my meat I don't need to be super specific right now that's a mistake a lot of powerlifters will make uh, too far out from the meet. Um, it's being too specific too soon with their work. But I'll go over that a little bit uh, in future videos. But I wanted to discuss, I guess, what the science says about the effect of music on strength and exercise performance. And I think we all have a special connection to music in one way or another. It's something that everybody likes where we all have something about it that we like it gets us going uh, can change our mood state and whatever but i wanted to see you know what does like what actually are the effects of music on exercise performance so i found three studies and the first one is by bianchi and colleagues and examined the effects of self-selected music on strength explosiveness and mood and the researchers wanted to uh do this by selecting 20 resistance trained men, so they were trained, uh, and they completed three sets to failure with 75% of their bench press one rep max, and then they did a squat jump with 30% of their one rep max, once while listening to self-selected music, and once while, while listening to no music. And these subjects reported their profile of mood states and RPE, and what they found is that there were no significant differences in RPE and reps to failure in the bench press between states. However, in the squat jump, the takeoff velocity rate of velocity development, rate of force development, or greater with self-selected music, whereas RPE was actually greater with no music. So that basically means that they found it easier to jump higher when they were actually listening to music. Um, and so this basically suggests that uh, listening to self-selected music may actually increase your acute power, which in the case of powerlifter is just explosiveness. Um, so how fast you can move the weights. Another one by Terry and colleagues examined the effects of music and exercise and sports uh, in a meta-analysis review where they basically took a ton of studies and reviewed it. Um, and the results supported the use of music listening across the, a range of multiple physical activities to promote, to promote more positive, effective valence, so airflow, um, enhance physical performance, reduce perceived exertion, and improve uh, physiological efficiency. So we basically how strong you are, or something like, like that. And then the final one that I, I found uh, examined the effect of music on anaerobic, an anaerobic exercise performance and muscular endurance. Um, and they found there was a significant increase in total work, relative peak power, and the total number of bench press repetitions performed. And they concluded that listening to self selected music improved exercise performance during the bench press. Uh, they were able to do more work, more reps more, for, you know, with a higher quality work. So, I guess the main takeaways from this is obviously music can increase exercise per performance uh, and it probably does provide that it is actually stimulative. Uh, basically it should induce a specific level of psychological arousal or a mood state. Um, and so like we all, we all, we all kind of know this inherently. Uh, there are some music, some types of music that really get you going and some types of music that don't get you going. Um, actually. Another talking point about what Bianchi colleagues found was that 
if they listen to sedated music or relaxing music, it actually was worse than listening to no music at all. So that's something to consider when you are considering your actual, um, you know, music for uh, slot election. It should be something that you have a connection to emotionally, and it should induce a altered mood state. Um, I will say that most of the music should include just a low to moderate state of a heightened psychological arousal or the most repeatable training for performances. Uh, this will allow for most consistent, consistent progress. Um, and higher levels of psychological arousal actually are correlated with higher levels of fatigue being induced. For consistent overload training, you don't want to always be training super, super close to failure or like balls to the walls all the time. The goal is to consistently get better slowly over time with submaximal work. If you're constantly having to get hyped up for your sessions and all of your sets, you're probably training a little bit too hard and should probably adopt more of a um, reserved approach with, with your, your, your training. Um, and I would say these high, these high arousal songs that really get you going for specific circumstances such as a meet, a PR, or a particularly hard week or session of training. Um, and you should have these special songs for harder sets or sessions. Um, again, use them sparingly for normal training. Uh, they should make you excited. Um, and it's kind of like with pre-workout. You don't want to take it all the time. If, you know, The more that you take it, the less you're going to feel the effects of it. So save it for when you actually really need it. Um, I would also consider creating different playlists for different training sessions. So maybe you have a different training playlist for bench versus squat versus deadlift or based off of what type of training session that you want to have to have. And then my final point I want to say is that a lifter's personality can also affect this. Some lifters might have a stronger attachment to music, uh, maybe a more suggestive or intense personality, and might get a larger effect from music. Uh, and typically this is going to be somebody who gets a large effect from cheering crowds or bystander effect. And some lifters just might not be as affected by music. So, you know, it's going to depend on lifter to lifter. But bottom line is that music should probably be used with your, with your training uh, in a strategic periodized manner, similar to everything else for best benefits. Um, and something that, you know, you can absolutely use to your advantage. So uh, let me know what your hype songs are uh, down in the comment section below. Um, I usually find myself listening to um, more Green Day, punk, rock. That's what gets me, me going. Um, and let me know what your PR song is. But I wanted to thank you guys for watching the video. Uh, if you guys like the video, please like, comment, share, subscribe. And I'll talk to you guys in the next one.